Hey folks, JD here, and today, on this really icy morning, I bring you this. This is the SEMA X22W, and this is the third iteration in the family of X20 nanocopters. So we had the X20, the X21, and now the X22W. This time, I've made sure I've gone for the camera version, just to have a little look and see, because the other two models that we were looking at, they weren't the camera model, and I just wanted to see the difference. Now, here we've got the same features that we looked at in the X20 and the X21. So we've got automatic takeoff, landing, we've got altitude hold, obviously we have a camera on the front so we have the ability to uh, use a smart device to control this. That's something we're going to be doing straight off the bat. Um, as well as four LEDs, two in the front and two in the back. Now in my first testing of this, just before I take it out I always spin up the quad, lift it up inside the house just to ensure that everything's okay. I did notice that the LEDs weren't very bright on the front, so I may have to double check that just to make sure. Now, as you can see with this, we have one battery just slotted in the back, just ooh, like that. Uh, I've got the second one with me should we need it, uh, like should this one not hold a charge properly or should this one just die prematurely. Uh, all in all, this looks quite nice. Very, very different shape to the other two that we've seen. This is more of a bullet shape, whereas the other two were more of a standard quadcopter, quite fat, quite wide shape. Okay, so what about the transmitter? Well, that's pretty standard. We've seen this with a load of different SEMA copters, being nano and larger quadcopters as well. We've got our four shoulder buttons, one for taking photos, one for taking video, uh, one for automatic takeoff and landing, and the other one for 360 flips, as well as we have our two standard analog sticks either side as well, and no buttons down the center console of the transmitter. So I'll tell you what, let's just take her up. This time we're gonna take her up first using the, tran using the smart device. Okay, so here we go. So what we're going to do first is just knock on the drone. There we go. Now we're going to go direct and look for its open Wi-Fi connection. Then we're going to connect to it. There we are. And come on and secure it. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, there we go. Now we are going to open up the SEMA Go app. Okay, let's click start. We should have video relaying back straight away, hopefully. Yes, there we go. All right. All right, so we're just gonna turn her on, and then when we turn her on, oh, come on. There we go, so we've got the motor spinning ever so slowly. Then we're gonna push up, and then hopefully, up she goes. Right, let's have a little look. So, I'm just gonna move the controller a little bit. I just wanna get a feel for if she's actually working well. Oh, she's working all right, actually. She's not doing too badly on the, uh, on the smart device. I'm not going to take her out too far, just in case something does go wrong. Uh, so I'm just going to pull her in and just take her around a few times. Now for the second I'm not recording any video and she does seem to be very slow to respond in going forward. So what I'm going to do here is just turn her and then we're just going to oh, bring her back to me. Look at that, she is struggling to respond. Now, it could be because we are minus four here today, or it could just be because she is just struggling to respond. Look at that. I'm pushing forward up as much as I possibly can. Oh, now she's coming forward. Okay, so it's a, it's a transmitter signalling issue. So if I stay quite close to her, then we shouldn't. There we go. If I stay quite close, I don't have any issues whatsoever. See? Look at that. Really responsive as long as I stay... Well, I'm not going to say dangerously close, because it is a nanocopter at the end of the day. Uh, but as long as I stay very close to her, she is very responsive. Okay, so that's... <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Don't know how I feel about that. If I'm honest, I quite like to get a bit of distance between me and the quadcopter. Uh, just from a safety point of view, if nothing else. Um, okay, well, I tell you what, it's working with the transmitter. So, let's bring her down for a bit of automatic landing. Come on, come on, down, down. It's feathering, so I'm just going to help it a little bit and just bring it down. There we go. Okay, so now we're down. So we've flown on the transmitter. We've landed on the transmitter. Landing was a bit of a nightmare on the transmitter. Uh, sorry, on the smart device. So let's swap over for the proper transmitter that came with this and see how that, see how the quadcopter controls with that instead. Okay, so we're back on the landing pad. As you can see now, the LEDs are flashing. This will just let you know that I have disconnected the, the smartphone. So what I'm going to do is just turn off 
the quadcopter, then turn it back on, and then bind quite simply by turning on the transmitter, one up, one down motion. All LEDs, including the one on the transmitter, are now solid. So from here, I'm just going to calibrate the gyros, just to make sure, because this is something I couldn't do from the smartphone app. So let me just do it a few times, okay, in every direction that I know. Uh, and from here, let's take her up and let's see how we get on with this one. So using the top closest shoulder arm on the right to you, up we go. So, uh, first of all, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is stand my way back because I like to have a bit of distance, as I said, and look, no problem whatsoever. It's a shame I should have brought another smartphone with me to do another another check on a different device. Um, but straight from the, uh, the transmitter, oh, absolutely, as you'd expect, no problem. Handles, now, this is going to be a little bit controversial considering what I've just said about the smartphone, but this handles a lot nicer than the X21. Now, the X21 was the much upgraded, I think, version of the X20. Now, the X22, being this one, is now upgraded a little bit more, and it seems to be dancing around a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check these extra speed modes. I'm going to click the right thumb uh, analog stick, and here we go, speed mode 2. The copter dipped quite a bit, but up it goes, and flying around remarkably well. Okay, let's try this automatic uh, landing as well. So, should be the same button as the takeoff. One click, as we saw, it feathered a lot because the barometer was reading different temperatures towards the bottom of um, the floor here. There we go, boom, straight down, no problem whatsoever. This time. Okay, so, let's turn this round. Let's take it back up. And the camera quality from the... Obviously, this is the first X20 um, style quadcopter that I've had that has a camera on the front. And looking from my smart device, it looked as if the camera was okay. It wasn't great, but it was okay. And to be honest, the out of a little indoor, outdoor copter like this, you're not going to have, you know, phantom quality. It's not going to be a, a, incredible, as the lens isn't, isn't going to be very, very expensive. But at the same time, it's a camera, it records video, takes photo, it's going to be okay. A couple of 3D flips. I do love flips. I do love 3D flips and rolls. Oh, but she's not doing them one after each other. Okay, let's bring her back to me. Let's take her up a little bit higher. Let's hit the button again. No, see that? Oh, now she will. Okay. Just a bit strange that a lot of quadcopters will just flip after flip after flip after flip. And I'm not aware of this having any new technology in which... So she did two there, and now she won't go any further. Oh well, but at least she's flipping, that's fine. That's not a problem. Right, so yeah, all in all, very happy. I'm happy you've done a couple of 3D flips, let's bring her down. <laughs> Alright, let's bring her down, let's land her. And I tell you what, let's get a little verdict on this little guy. Okay, so verdict. Well, this little guy, if we start off as we as we uh, began with on the video, so the smartphone. I was less than impressed, very juttery, um, very difficult to try and get it to relay my um, my controls back at me through the quadcopter. But what I did notice was when I got closer to the quadcopter, it actually responded a lot better. So that just led me to, to believe that there is actually a little bit of a signal issue, which is a bit strange because, well, I'm running an iPhone 8 and I haven't had any other issues with any other quadcopters. So that does raise a bit of a concern for this guy. Um, so I thought I'd bring her down and then we take her up with the transmitter. Did that um, and no problems whatsoever. Absolutely perfect. Same as the X20, same as the X21. Absolutely no issue whatsoever. I wish I'd brought another phone with me to test using another uh, another device to see whether or not I had the same issues on there. So I'm going to probably be back and do that. Um, now, as for the camera, camera quality was okay. It's not it's not brilliant. It's not terrible. Um, obviously, the camera itself does relay video back through to the smartphone app, uh, and that is how I recorded the video direct on this guy. Automatic takeoff, brilliant. Automatic landing, brilliant. Brilliant. A lot better on the transmitter than it was on the smart device. Um, on the smart device, when I landed this, it feathered a lot at the bottom. It wouldn't land until I actually brought it down. Uh, whereas on the transmitter, it just came down. No issue whatsoever. Um, so, yeah, a little bit a little bit um and ah in. I much prefer it on the transmitter. Um, and uh, what I would say is if you are going to use it on the smartphone, test it indoors first to see what it's like. Don't take her outside and just use her. Um, but all in all, I'm happy with how she flies, but I'm only happy with how she flies on the transmitter. On the smartphone, 
no. Well, the transmitter is your standard SEMA transmitter, and to be honest with you, there's no problems with it whatsoever. I had no issues auto taking off, auto landing, moving the quadcopter around uh, this pitch without any issue. The only one problem I did have, and that is with the 3D flips and rolls. So what I noticed is that oh, it only flipped in two six, in, it only flipped twice in, uh, in in a succession. Any other time like that, I'd have to wait 10 seconds, and then it would flip again. Wait 10 seconds, and then I could flip it again. Uh, a little bit strange. I've not come across that before. <laughs> But other than that, I think it was. I think it was okay to be honest. I think it was all right. Um, the transmitter fits nice in your hand. There's no issues whatsoever. Obviously, you can put your smartphone on the top here for when you wanted to record some video, but use the transmitter as your main controlling mechanism. Um, yeah, so all in all, very good. So there we are, folks. Thanks ever so much for watching, listening. I've been JD. You've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time, my friends, happy flying.